I mean, yo, Diddy, you gave me the Ushka Smash. You gave me the Ushka Smooth. The Smooth Smash. Diddy. Yeah, son. You know what I mean? I want to say this about Soldier Boy. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta give him a little bit of latitude because he a victim. And he, he, his been ran through quite a bit. They was playing tapes and then the owner of the house pulled out Soldier Boy tapes. That's why he's always able to call other on being a swish. Birds of a feather flock together. Jaguar Wright and Orlando Brown are making headlines once again this time for exposing a surprisingly extensive list of down-low DL rappers in the music industry who have allegedly been engaging in same-sex relations for career advancement. It's long been rumored that many rappers prefer men but use women as a facade to conceal their true preferences. However, the full extent of this behavior was unknown until Jaguar and Orlando began sharing some explosive details. These two have been sounding the alarm about these industry secrets for years, well before any public revelations surfaced yet they were often dismissed as being out of their minds. Now, with more information coming to light, people are starting to reconsider their previous assumptions. As it turns out, Jaguar and Orlando might have been telling the truth all along. With a, with a gay rapper. Yeah, man. And, and gay, not being just full out gay, but hiding it, trying to pretend like he, you know, loves girls and lived the rap lifestyle, but really, he's a man fan. In the closet it's real scary, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta get into, you know, get into the seriousness of it, and it's just not fair to, you know, other people. And then that spreads because that girl that you might be fooling might leave you and go find another dude who ain't gay, give him the disease. I'm sure many of you have come across the whispers about certain rappers who put on a straight facade while secretly living on the down low. Wendy Williams was one of the first to spill this tea, pointing fingers at Diddy after some telling photos surfaced. These images show Diddy having his shirt pulled down by another man during a vacation in Cancun, sparking widespread speculation. Diddy did not take kindly to Wendy airing his alleged secret and swiftly retaliated. He ensured she was fired from Hot 97 and barred from ever working at any other radio station in New York. This incident highlighted the lengths to which some individuals will go to maintain their public personas. About Wendy Williams, she got fired from Hot 97 because she had a picture of Puffy. So if you don't mind, give me the story from your point of view and what was in the picture. We were in Cancun. For whatever reason, dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. Some girls that was taking pictures. They took the, that picture and emailed it back to Wendy Williams. Wendy Will said she had him in a compromising position and like it was gay p something like that. She was gonna put it out. Wendy had shown people that email. Puff told Hot 97 if they didn't get rid of her before he got back in New York, that they was not gonna get any music from any of his friends, any of the record labels executives that was cool with him. Everybody was gonna boycott, boycott their station. We was out in LA for about three days before we landed back in New York. Wendy Williams was in the radio station in Philly. He was fired. A very homosexual era of hip hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams. And uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And now it's all come full circle. There were many situations, none of which to talk about, but there were many situations um, back in the day in, in my career. And um, it's all coming full circle now, so. At the time, Wendy probably didn't grasp the full impact of her actions. But by speaking out, she inadvertently paved the way for others like Orlando and Jaguar Wright to step forward and shine a spotlight on other DL rappers within the industry. Her bold move served as a catalyst, emboldening others to share their truths and challenge the status quo. Sometimes one person's courageous act can ignite a chain reaction of change. Things that will make you buckle, bro. They make you buckle, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, nah, cause man, people done lost their families, bro. People done lost their kids and sh People, people, uh, people, um. The plot thickens even further. During that very interview, not only did Orlando Brown call out Diddy for his alleged DL tendencies, but he also accused him of attempting to exploit their relationship by grooming him into his little twink when he was still a newcomer in the industry. This revelation adds another layer of complexity to the already turbulent narrative, shedding light on the power dynamics and exploitation that can occur behind the scenes. 
It's a stark reminder that fame and success in the entertainment industry often come with a dark underbelly. I mean, you gave me the Ooskash Mouash. I love it, yo. I love it. You gave me the Ooskash Mouash. And. Ha <laughs> ha! Ooskash Mouash. You know what I'm talking about, Diddy? In a subsequent interview, Orlando Brown dropped more bombshells, revealing a laundry list of industry heavyweights he claimed to have slept with. Among the names he mentioned were Usher, Drake, Bo Wow, Busta Rhymes, and of course, Diddy. This shocking disclosure sent shockwaves through the entertainment world, further exposing the hidden realities and tangled relationships within the music industry. Orlando's willingness to speak candidly about his experiences challenged the perception of fame and power, highlighting the complexities and vulnerabilities that lie beneath the glamorous facade. You smashed him? You smashed him? When it was a girl? I didn't smash anything. So we, how you know we that? We made love. We made love. That's Who you made love with? Diddy, Bow Wow, um, Busta Rhymes. <laughs> you just told me you see Busta in, in the airport too. Demo from China, I got here and know you. You smashed Drake? Uh, no, I never smashed. Oh, you made love to Drake. And, and, um, uh, Cat Williams. Bro, you smashing a lot of people. Uh, what's that nigga name? Uh, uh, Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard, Terrence Howard. Uh, Terrence Howard. Um, Usher. Usher's a gusher. And, what uh, the why are you not naming all I'm telling you, bro, it's my dad's, my dad's friends. My dad sicked his baddest friends on me. Who's your dad? Lucifer. <laughs> Continuing on the theme of revelations, Booster Rhymes found himself under the spotlight when his former bodyguard came forward with explosive allegations. According to the bodyguard, Busta reportedly paid significant amounts of money to men to join him in his VIP section, implying a hidden side to the rapper's lifestyle. Additionally, the bodyguard claimed that Busta had an intimate relationship with his lawyer, who coincidentally is also gay. These shocking claims shed light on the complexities of relationships and power dynamics within the entertainment industry, prompting a closer examination of the often glossed over realities behind the glitz and glamour. The homies would always say, man, you know, we gotta break some of we, we, we got to bring some, what they call them? Uh, I'm not going to say that. Man. They call them uh, fun boys. They say we got to have some fun boys in the section for Buster. Because, you know, I, I, I bodyguard for Ghostface before. You feel me? And being around him, you 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 hear things. You feel me? I'm like, damn. And my auntie, like, the biggest Buster Rhymes fan. You feel me? Like, every cookout, she playing it. All his little fast rapping, all of that, him and Craig Mack playing that. Bro, on my soul, I'm out with a group of people. At this time, um, I was with uh, Don Benjamin. You familiar with him? No, I never heard of him. Model dude, like a model guy. He be doing like some rapping and stuff. His name Don Benjamin. The, I'm out with Don Benjamin. And the club we ended up going to, Busta Rhymes in there. So he got, it was a little lawyer guy that was with us. And the little lawyer guy we was with, you know, he was a gay dude, super cool, feel me, good guy. Bro, Busta Rhymes wanted him in his section so bad. Like, what? <laughs> Pulled him to the section, like through the rope, and tucked him off in the corner. So I'm looking like, well, he ain't come with us, but I know he was in the little group. So if I go out with somebody, like a group of people, I try to make sure everybody get there together and leave together. No, he stayed with them. He stayed in there with them, bro. For sure, bro. Adding another layer to the unfolding saga 
an old video surfaced featuring a YouTuber recounting an unsettling encounter with Busta Rhymes. In the video, the YouTuber described the moment when Busta allegedly approached him outside a club, gently grabbing his hand and inviting him to join him in the VIP section. Initially viewing it as a gesture of generosity, the YouTuber accepted the offer. However, as the night progressed, it became evident that Busta had ulterior motives. This viral video further fueled speculation about Busta's behavior and raised questions about the boundaries of consent and manipulation in the entertainment world. I'm walking across the street and Busta Rhymes just grabbed my hand. And he shaking, he holding my hand. Now I ain't know it was Busta at first. You know, Busta Rhymes tall. I'm sure I came up to about right here. So the first thing I noticed was this big flip mode chain that was blinding me. So I look at the chain and I'm like, and I look up, I'm like, oh, what's up, Busta? What's up? Now he hold my hand the whole time. I'm like, what's up, man? He like, what you doing? And I was like, oh, me and my people, we about to go to this club around the corner. What's up, man? You know, and then I noticed throughout my peripheral vision, the side eye, this big bodyguard in black just standing there, you know, looking around, you know, looked at me, you know, still looking around. Meanwhile, Buster still got my hand in his hand. And uh, he says, you know, I'm about to go in this club. You know, we got a section, you know, you can come in with me if you want. And I'm like, word, for real? Like, that's what's up. Like, he was like, yeah, I was like, well, I gotta, you know, tell my people. I was like, I, I, I come in, you know what I'm saying? He was like, okay, just let me know, you know, tell them that you coming in there to meet with me and come on up. And I was like, bet. Transitioning to another key figure in this saga, Jaguar Wright has been outspoken about the prevalence of DL rappers in the industry and their exploitation of younger artists desperate for career advancement. Her latest target? None other than 50 Cent. Jaguar recently made headlines by alleging that 50 Cent engaged in a relationship with Soulja Boy when the latter was still a budding star in the industry. This revelation shines a light on the darker side of the music business, where power dynamics and manipulation often overshadow talent and creativity. Jaguar's boldness in exposing these truths challenges the industry's facade and sparks important conversations about accountability and transparency. He did the rap game since he was little, just like Weezy. Yeah. And he has been ran through quite a bit. And they caught him naked. Whoever his whoever his big daddy was threw him ass naked into the hallway. He was walking around in the hallway holding. Him. Has actually appeared on a magazine couple together um cover together. Damn. Uh, I know exactly who you're talking about. That's why he's always able to call other on being a swish. Birds of a feather flock to The plot thickens even further as Jaguar Wright continues to uncover shocking truths within the industry. In her latest revelation, she exposed the alleged coercion and manipulation orchestrated by none other than Diddy and Will Smith. According to Jaguar, Diddy and Will reportedly forced Meek Mill and Basher Gray into what she describes as freak-offs. Will Smith, in particular, is accused of drawing Brasher Gray into his circle under the guise of mentorship, only to subject him to unwanted and distressing experiences. Jaguar vividly recalled the harrowing incident where Basher Gray was heard screaming and fleeing from Will Smith's residence, shedding light on the disturbing power dynamics at play behind closed doors. These revelations underscore the darker side of mentorship and highlight the importance of holding influential figures accountable for their actions. They do weird things in their house and young men have left their house screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. Meek Mills. Bashir Gray. Left that house screaming. August the only one that stayed and I guess he was really sick, he needed a dog. In a shocking turn of events, Meek Mill found himself embroiled in scandal when he was implicated in one of Diddy's lawsuits as one of the individuals allegedly involved in a sexual relationship with the mogul. Just when it seemed like things couldn't get any worse, an audio recording surfaced purportedly capturing Meek being intimate with Diddy. The distressing audio reportedly features Meek screaming in a manner that suggests he's in distress, painting a disturbing picture of the events that transpired. This revelation sent shockwaves through the industry and raised serious questions about consent, coercion, and the abuse of power. The thing was spikes, son. 
Like all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was passed the f out. I don't drink. I don't drink. So I was playing that shit off like I don't f drink. I smoke. Like I smoke and I had my own, but like everybody was passed out. Yo, Diddy had that man in the room. Look, yes, I put my ear to the f door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what the f was going on, but I just heard balls slapping against cheeks. I heard struggling to take. I heard being like, yeah, daddy, daddy when, when I when, when he started all that daddy this and daddy that, and then I heard some hollering and struggling like, yeah, I kept the phone there and I recorded all this because I was like, this Diddy. Bitch. Everybody kind of knew back in the day that Meek Mills and Punk was a little too friendly. Anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up alike on more than one occasion. Who could forget that chilling video? It circulated widely, leaving many viewers unsettled. In the footage, Meek Mill is seen in a pool, his posture unnaturally arched as if in discomfort. Meanwhile, Diddy, behind the camera, addresses him as daddy. The implication of the scene, combined with the context of the allegations surrounding their relationship, added another layer of unease to an already disturbing narrative. The video served as a stark reminder of the murky depths of power dynamics and exploitation within the entertainment industry, prompting renewed scrutiny and introspection. What's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. In a stunning twist, despite initial reports implicating Diddy's former bodyguard in the leak, Jaguar Wright dropped a bombshell revelation. She claimed that the damning audio of Meek Mill allegedly being intimate with Diddy was not the result of some internal vendetta, but rather a calculated move by none other than Nicki Minaj. According to Jaguar, Nicki Minaj was the mastermind behind the recording and subsequent leak. This revelation turned the spotlight onto a new player in the unfolding drama, adding another layer of complexity to an already tangled web of accusations and counter-accusations within the industry. Oh, man. Uh -oh. And then eating milk, running the f well, talking about expensive pain no. in his ass. Wait, this is Philly you're talking about now. Wait a minute, Jack. Me. Wait a minute. He's a f***ing Fruit Loop. He did he five. This is Philly. He's a deep fried period. <laughs> he did he five. He did he fried. He the did he do I bop. Me. Real rap. You think that audio that they put out was real? Yeah, that was f real. <laughs> Nikki put that up to here. That, that Nikki recorded that at the freak off in the Calabasas. Man. She been waiting to drop that shit on me. Oh, she just wasn't going to tell nobody it was Diddy. But now that Diddy out there, why not? So then who's the guy who's claiming he recorded it? Yeah, oh, uh, somebody bouncer. that got paid? Yeah, he said, like, I was yeah, standing outside the door. Yeah, somebody that got paid. Yeah. Before Jaguar dropped names left and right, there was one figure who always seemed to be at the forefront of her discussions, Diddy. After Diddy reportedly silenced Wendy Williams regarding his DL activities, Jaguar bravely stepped up to speak out. She put her own safety on the line by doing so. One instance she recounted involved a former lawyer of Diddy's confiding in her, According to Jaguar, this lawyer walked in on Christopher Williams performing a sexual act on Diddy in his office. Despite knowing Christopher's sexual orientation, Diddy allegedly coerced him into the act in exchange for a demo record deal. These shocking revelations shed light on the dark underbelly of the music industry, where power dynamics and exploitation often overshadow talent and creativity. Jaguar's courage in exposing these truths challenges the industry's facade and sparks important conversations about accountability and transparency. I don't know, I guess he wanted to sign. I don't know what happened, but Puff was supposed to be giving him a demo deal and he gave him a demo deal and I guess it was supposed to turn into an album deal, which that never happened. Um, but this young woman walked in to get approval on some paperwork, Let's see, and uh, when she walked in, the door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams performing for on Puff. Now, 
from what she said to me, um, it was disturbing because, you know, they didn't stop. She just walked out and she just kept her head down at the office the rest of the day. I believe it was. And I don't think it was at the end of business day that day, but I think it was the following day. He came into her office and was like, yeah, so you came in there. So what? What you going to do? You want to say something? And she was like, oh, no, I, you know, I just, she was like, I just don't understand why you left the door unlocked. If you were in there doing that, why would you leave the door unlocked? He said, I'll do whatever the f I want to do in my building. And she was, I just don't know. He was like, it's power. See, I can make a man. He said, if I can make a man, my, I can make people do anything. Adding to the intrigue surrounding Diddy, there have been speculations swirling about his alleged involvement with another high profile rapper. The game. These rumors gained traction after The Game hinted at a collaboration with Diddy on an album. However, instead of hitting the studio together, The Game claimed that Diddy flew him out to various destinations worldwide for extravagant parties. Interestingly, many of these festivities reportedly took place in Atlanta. Diddy spared no expense, treating The Game to luxurious shopping sprees and showering him with extravagant gifts like designer watches and bedazzled chains. These revelations cast a spotlight on the blurred lines between business and pleasure in the entertainment industry, raising eyebrows and prompting further scrutiny into Diddy's relationships with his collaborators. Start kicking it with Diddy, right? I ran around with Diddy for two years, uh, damn near. Um, and this Diddy, we never went to the studio one time, but he was like, yo, I f with, your, f with your demo, that you know, bad boy, bad boy, but hey, Playboy, hey, hey, here go a watch, Playboy, here go a chain, Playboy. I'm like, yo, we ever going rap? He's like, nah, nah, yeah, I was doing for two hey, yo, years. with the jet late, the jet leaving five, we going to Miami, Playboy. Mm -hmm. We going to, you know what I'm saying? We going to New York. We, mm -hmm. we in ATL this weekend, mm -hmm. Playboy, pop out, pop out. And I was going everywhere with Diddy. Wasn't Puffy interested in, in working with you also? Yeah, Puff, I was running around with Puff uh, for a minute, but we was just, uh, we was just partying, man. Puff liked to party. Um, so that's basically all we did. I think I think the whole the few times I was running around with D Mac and Puff, um, we just did a bunch of party and we might have went to the studio once or twice, but I don't think I didn't get to record nothing. I was just, you know. Okay, but I mean Puffy was a huge deal back then. Still a huge deal. You know, I mean he's still a huge deal, but he's not doing music anymore, right. is what I'm saying. Back then, Bad Boy was on fire mm -hmm. and he's running around with you and you know, Puffy's a busy guy. I was running around with him. Yeah. You were running around with him. Right. Was he talking about signing you or, or what exactly happened? Nah, P Puff was, he wanted to sign me. He just, you know, he was moving around. Like he had the uh, restaurant Justin's mm -hmm. in Atlanta. So we was in and out of that. Um, a lot of parties in Atlanta uh, with him and uh, V and, you know, Big Wolf and, you know, Fab and Jeezy was just, you know, I mean, Fab was already on. Jeezy was coming, uh, you know, coming of his coming to age. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just we just party, man. Now, indeed, the whispers about Diddy's infamous parties have long circulated within the industry. And let's be real. Diddy isn't exactly known for his altruism when it comes to showering men with lavish gifts, unless there's some ulterior motive involved. Case in point. When 50 Cent publicly called out Diddy for allegedly attempting to groom him into his boy toy after offering to take him shopping, this bold accusation shed light on the power dynamics and potential exploitation that can occur behind the scenes of the music business. It's a stark reminder that in the world of fame and fortune, not everything is as glamorous as it seems, and sometimes there are darker truths lurking beneath the surface. The pop was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to get. Style. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we can just hang out. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He's telling me we gotta kick it. And he was like, yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what the f this just say? <laughs> the whispers about Diddy's influence in the industry took a curious turn when rumors surfaced about his involvement with YK Osiris. It all began around 2021, when Diddy and YK were spotted vacationing together in Jamaica. YK raised eyebrows by reposting a revealing photo of Diddy shirtless in a pool on his IG stories, accompanied by praying hand emojis. He also shared a photo of himself receiving a massage while lying naked, captioned with suggestive remarks about enjoying Diddy's company in the beautiful weather. Many observers couldn't help but speculate about the nature of their relationship, with some suggesting that YK might be Diddy's twink. One commenter noted the absence of any female presence or family-related content in YK's posts, leading them to conclude that his trip was likely sponsored by a man. 
The timing of the trip raised further suspicions, especially considering rumors about YK facing financial troubles and selling off his expensive cars to make ends meet. It seemed unlikely that he could afford such a luxurious getaway on his own, sparking speculation about Diddy's possible role in sponsoring the trip. The whole situation left many scratching their heads and fueled ongoing speculation about the behind-the-scenes machinations of the music industry, where power, influence, and financial backing can often blur the lines between business and personal relationships. Yes, man, I sold my Lamborghini, I sold my Rolls Royce, I sold my Cadillacs. Yes, sir, Ski! <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, this thing humble yourself. I ain't gonna cap to you. I got a floss for you, this bro. I think oh, God, I ain't got a floss for you, this man. If y'all gonna think what y'all want to think, if I do got it, don't got it. Y'all, y'all gonna think what y'all want to think. I love this Honda. Shit, I ain't riding the fucking Lamborghini. I got a floss for you. That's what, that's what's wrong with you. Y'all feel y'all like y'all got a floss for the Instagram, man. F them, man. Y'all don't floss for no dumb, no dumb Instagram. They gonna think what the fuck they want to think. Lie. I had to sit back, I had to relax and look at the world like Osiris. You forgot who the you all you forgot where the fuck you came from fuck a limbo fuck a rose was remember where you came from don't get lost in the sauce get this music drop this music and get this yk's baby mama added fuel to the fire by sharing her side of the story on her ig stories she revealed that she ended her relationship with yk after catching him in bed with another man she made it clear that her issue wasn't with anyone's sexual orientation, but rather with the abuse of power that occurs when influential figures coerce others into unwanted intimate situations. Many people resonated with her sentiment, acknowledging that it's one thing to have a preference, but another to use power to manipulate and emasculate others. The comment section erupted with a mix of opinions, with some drawing parallels between Diddy's actions and the notion of karma, while others speculated about the impact of childhood trauma on individuals like Orlando Brown. The question was raised, are Orlando and Jaguar right doing the right thing by exposing DL rappers? And is Diddy the pioneer of such activities in the industry? Opinions varied, but one thing was clear. The conversation had sparked widespread interest and debate. People were eager to share their thoughts and engage in the discussion, highlighting the significance of shining a light on hidden truths within the entertainment world.